Oh, it's not really all that clear. What's up, everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. Got gloves on. It's pretty cold out here. It's about 44 outside, but it's been in the 30-something degrees all week. And it's about 4 o'clock in the morning. This is the first day I've had off work since I've been back from the conference um, on the 14th or whatever it was. So I'm finally going to sit down. I'm going to break apart this filament extruder that I've constructed and show you what I did and why. So yeah, this video is Russ's filament extruder, the breakdown. And again, this is uh, the filament extruder as it is right now. Um, there, are th there are things on here that could change. Um, the only thing I think that may change is where the end of my uh, auger bit is at and this other heating element. Um, if everything works the way it should, which I think it will, then we should be ready to roll. So let me show you what I did. First of all, the last time you guys seen this, I had this element on the end, which I had resistors on here. This works, but I couldn't get it hot enough. Um, if I had lower wattage resistors, or I mean lower ohmed resistors, I probably could have been better off. But um, what I ended up doing is I went and purchased some hair dryers for $2 at a local thrift store. Took apart the hair dryers and it had the uh, nickel, uh, what is it, nickel chromium wire in it, um, heating wire. And I did have to wrap it with uh, Kapton tape. And then I siliconed layers, as I wrapped it, I siliconed layers with uh, high RTV sealant, or RTV uh, silicone, I should say. And basically layered it on there. This is a bobbin that I made out of uh, aluminum. And again, I'm going to show you how this is, but I want to kind of give you just what I did here. I also drilled a hole in here and uh, put my uh, thermocouple in there. And I will be actually taking all of this stuff apart. So, uh, yeah, that's really what I got to show. Mind all the junk in the background, don't worry about all that stuff. I've got a lot of cleanup to do around here. Like I said, this is the first day I've had off in a while, and I am uh, looking forward to it. I pretty much left work, went to the conference, got back. Two hours later, I was at work, and I've been at work ever since. So the top here is just a piece of polycarbonate that uh, used to be a light housing and um, this is just some scrap plastic so uh, after this video I'm actually going to fire this thing up and I'm going to see how it works but I told you I'd tear it down and show you why I did what I did so just bear with me I'm going to take this apart piece by piece and I'm going to show you piece, piece by piece and uh, I really hope that you guys enjoy this and I'll try to explain why I did what I did first thing I'm going to do is turn the air compressor off alright, I think the first time that's happened what happened in my last video? it must be the cold weather <clears throat> anyway so, the first thing I'm going to do is I've, uh, the way I've done this is I've put quick connectors on here. These are uh, like 600 volt, I don't know, 10 amp connectors for uh, fluorescent lights. And I did that so I can take this apart like this without, uh, without having to mess around with anything else. And then the thermal couples. I actually have them twisted together and put in a junction box. And let me kind of show you what I got. So, I've just got my quick connects. This thermal couple just sits in the end. I really need to put some heat, um, silicone or something when I put this back together. Uh, some uh, you know, heat sink compound type of stuff. I probably won't for now, but I'll just wrap everything. It should be alright. But uh, you can see, <clears throat> I've got a regular thermal block here. Now, when you do thermal couples, you actually are supposed to have the proper 
um, terminal block so you don't have a cold junction <clears throat> and so what I've done to try to get past that is just wrap my thermocouple around the wires and wrap everything together and then compress those two together and then I shouldn't have a cold junction there as far as like a bad cold junction still a cold junction but not a bad one so I'm just using these to compress these all together and this is actually going into the inside here so I'm going to uh, uh, actually I could probably leave well, I already got it apart I'll just take this apart and I'll show you what I got I've got this wrapped with uh, thermal tape or uh, fiberglass tape I guess I should say and I am going to unwrap that but let's disconnect this stuff first those are really on there I might leave them on there and uh, just untape it from my big resistor here but basically the reason I have terminal blocks up here like this and quick connects is because I plan on taking this apart and cleaning it because I want to try different plastics and so the way I've engineered this is to try to demonstrate the easiest way to get this apart to clean and I think you'll like what I've done I think I need to bring the camera down let me do that so you guys are more more level with me you can see what I'm doing a little better I think got a little heater fan running back here it's uh it's not too bad out here but it's kinda chilly I'm gonna go ahead and take this housing off here I'll show you how I got this on here everything's just well not everything but this top part is just hand tightened for now alright so here is the here is the hopper okay it's just a stainless steel welded hopper it looks terrible on those two welds I know then on the inside here I've got a a uh, nice cut in here where it fits nicely on my my pipe I want to be able to remove this in case I need to get this apart and make this easily removable so these two pieces of stainless um, just bolt right onto the top of here and then I 3d printed the top here which I've got little set screws that go into the acrylic or the uh, polycarbonate tube so fairly straightforward I just welded that up I don't have any dimensions all this stuff was just built in my head as I went along I'm gonna show you uh, what the auger looks like I did um, I did uh, take a uh, reamer and reamed out the stainless steel tube you see there this stainless steel tube is actually a piece of water pipe I think a three quarter inch water pipe so we'll get to that more when I get it apart let's go ahead uh, probably end up time lapsing this I'm going to unwrap this I'm going to get a different pair of gloves I'm going to unwrap all of the stuff on here so. here we go a little time lapse All right, so as you can see, I just had the fiberglass wrapped around there, and uh, the reason I did that is to keep the heat contained nicely. This is what it looks like underneath, and uh, some of you have seen this, but some of you have not. Um, I am going to leave, you know, I'll take this off. That fiberglass is kind of some nasty stuff, so uh, I wanted to wear some different gloves. I did end up drilling a hole and pushing my thermocouple right in there, which I'll show you in a minute. Alright, so now these two are disconnected. Now, normally I'll disconnect it here and leave all this stuff bundled together. But for this demonstration, I wanted to tear it down pretty much all the way so we can see what's going on. 
I'm going to get the air compressor and blow this thing off because I can feel fiberglass everywhere. Nasty stuff. Alright, we're going to get the air compressor and blow this thing off because I can feel fiberglass everywhere. Nasty stuff. Alrighty. Whew, hate that fiberglass. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys something kind of unique here. And, uh, I thought you guys might like this, so I'm going to show you how I how I did the end. Now the end of this is actually a Schwedge lock uh, fitting. So originally I had this on there, which has a regular hole in it, and I need to get the other fitting, which is in my pocket over here. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I, I've got this on here. This is just screwed on here. Okay. Because I want to be able to easily change the tips. Alright, so those that's that's the heating element. And here's the tips. Okay. This is nothing more than a than a swedge lock fitting. Let's see if we can get that. Okay. And this is actually a pre-made brass um, fitting for this but I'll be um, either making or purchasing a um, probably make it I can machine a piece like this pretty easy um, and I actually have different size holes so what I can do is actually extrude uh, my small filament or big filament uh, 3 millimeter or 1.5 1.75 so here's the interesting thing you see these grooves I have inside of my heating element here okay this actually fits loosely in there alright and some of you are wondering how I did that because they don't go all the way through see how they stop right there and I'm going to show you a little trick I took another fitting housing and you can see it's got these little dimples and you can see it's real sharp on the edges see the difference and what I did is I I sharpened the edge of this whole side I put it on here and then I pressed it into this um, aluminum bobbin that I made then I took it back out and I stuck this in the press and I pressed the edges out you see how they got a little bit of a butter after I pressed them out I basically just wedged it this way and caught just the edge and, and you can see where the edge of the vise was see what I'm saying and then I put that back in there and I pushed that back through there so now I have an oversized opening where I can fit my my swedge lock fitting into so just a little simple little trick of a of an easy way to cut cut edges in something like this because originally if you flip it over you, you, I can't get it in there and that allows me to actually grab the whole housing and I can turn the whole thing so anyway just a little uh, little trick that I did I thought I'd show you it's pretty nice okay so the end of here is just a swedge lock that I welded on here so let me scoot you back because I'm going to actually take this apart I'm going to pull this resistor off slowly without breaking it. Okay, so here's my resistor. Again, I don't know if this is going to work, but I have a feeling it's going to actually work really well. There's the hole. I did drill it all the way through. Let's see if we can... I don't see no light. Where'd my hole go? I don't see no light shining through. Oh, right there. Uh, you can't see the light. Anyway, I did drill a hole through there. I used a ceramic bit and put this whole thing, submerged it in water, and just used a Dremel and went right on through there. I did that to get my heat in the right place for my uh, thermocouple. So this is basically it right here. This is the whole thing. Now, um, I should have showed you this first, but before I take this off and this off, I wanted to show you how I designed this. Alright, and basically, 
I tried to design this to where the entire apparatus could be taken apart and cleaned easily. That's the reason I designed it this way. So, let's see here. Oh, not that one. Everything, I already loosened the bottom. I should be able to get them out. But there are two bolts on the bottom, two bolts on the top. Go ahead and get the bottom two out. Okay, and take the top two off. Now again, I usually don't have to take any of the heating elements off to do this. But they come off fairly easy as you've seen. So it's not a, not a real big deal. So from this point right here all the way up is all stainless steel all the way to the end. But I have to crack these two loose. Okay, because that kind of clamps on there. So what I've done is I removed the bolts holding this block in from the top and the bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something really unique. Let's see if I can get a good angle of this. I designed this so I can pull the whole front off. Okay? With the auger bit. Now the entire auger bit and everything came right off. You see that? And I did that in case the auger bit got wedged or stuck in the actual device. And everything else just falls off. All the other parts here. The bushings, the sleeves, the, the whole entire bearing, um, even the center bearing that I got back here. Everything just stays right there. And that that the reason I did that like that is so that I can easily clean this thing because I'm sure there will be a point in time where this all gets locked up and I won't be able to get it out so once I got this far apart you can just pull the auger bed out and now you've got your stainless steel housing so let me kind of show you what I did here alright that's what it looks like when you're looking down the barrel and there actually is some some plastic right here at the end. <laughs> I was I was playing with temperatures and uh, yummy a little burnt but that's because it was just sitting in there. Now let's look down it. There you go. You can see I have a pretty nice polish in there and uh, that's because I reamed this out. It doesn't look the best but it fits works quite well. So basically I have just a, a block of stainless here that I drilled two holes and uh, a hole in here for this pipe to fit. It fit very very snug and then I came back and I TIG welded the front and I TIG welded the back and uh, along with all the other parts that you see here I've TIG welded on the end of the tubes so let's crack this apart see I think I had this marked I'm gonna mark it again I really need to punch it I got it scribed, but I'm going to mark it again with a marker. And that way I know how I took it apart. I have a little scribe marks in there, but we'll use marker for now. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know what this uh, material is that I've used in between here. I, I actually, I don't know what it is. I took it off of a roll and it was a roll from a sticker machine, an old uh, sticker machine that puts stickers on boxes as they go by on a conveyor and it's almost like a Bakelite material. Now I probably should change something here and I'll explain that to you but after a couple of just tests with nothing in the chamber and just some heat 
it seemed to be fairly well, so I don't think I'm going to worry about it. Alright, so let me move this down. Set the pieces out here. Oh, don't need those. Some of these fit really tight in this plastic piece. I drilled all my holes, very tight tolerances. Again, all the end stuff here is, is, is stainless. And don't worry, I'm not going to break everything else down here, but I'm going to show you some more stuff. And we'll put it back together and fire it up in the next video. basically this is the first tube now the auger bit doesn't fit as tight inside of here as it does in this housing so you can see there's just a little play in there okay but that's because I didn't want anything binding up out here so the end here it does go down from about a uh, 5 8 hole here um, down to a smaller hole that you see here and then gets compressed even further as it comes out the tip. This just sits in there like that. Alright, so that's the barrel end and that makes it easy to change out the tip here. Now it's going to be a little bit harder to clean out because this isn't a straight tube and I can't push stuff out, but I can push anything I want out backwards. So that should be good enough. Now on the back side of this swedge lock fitting, I did machine it so it's really at a nice bevel. And I doubt you're going to be able to see in there and actually see that. And here is the other nice fitting, all stainless. I think I did a decent job on this stuff. The, the welds aren't that bad. They ain't that good. They ain't that bad. I had to go back and machine the edges off here. But uh, these did go all the way into the tube. So the tube is actually part of the fitting, or the the flange you see there. And here's this material. I don't know what this is. This is Bakelite of some kind, but it's it's not as brittle as Bakelite, but it holds heat really well as far as separation. And for some reason, I just got lucky. That hole, some, well, not lucky, but Faith had it, I guess. But that hole is exactly the right diameter. So we will put all that back together here in a minute. The auger bit, I did chop the end off and it looks really hot right now because I heated this whole thing up without any plastic in it and it kind of got a little hot. I really need to butter that stuff off before I start it, but it'll be alright um, for test running. You can see I machined this, this down just a little bit right here. For whatever reason, this back lip on this drill bit, uh, this is just a wood auger bit by the way. The back end of this thing, for some reason, wasn't round as the rest of it. Uh, cheap Chinese, I guess. I don't know. But, um, but yeah. It, it works. Um, well, there you go. Five-eighths. China. This was already here, and this was already here, and it already had a center point in it, which made my life a lot easier. I had a, a nice shank here to put my bearings on, and I had a nice way of attaching a gear to it. See, I got this colored. I got that colored. Ooh, I just released some fury. Did you hear it? All right, so let me show you this cool contraption. Let me show you how I've got all this stuff set up. This is just sitting in here. This bushing. This bushing. This is just a spacer that I already machined to the right size, so I used it. Here's the gear show you this stuff in a minute and here is my um, my thing in the bobber all right so this is my live center I did make this 
and it works pretty well. I took a bearing out of something else I had that's an actual bearing right there. A really thin, round bearing. I have no idea what number is on it. And uh, just machined me a tip on there, making sure my bearing fit. Okay, and then on the back side, I luckily I had one of these, and I had to end up using just a regular washer, but I only had one of the races here. But the regular washer will be just fine. And so you've got your compression fitting along with your regular bearing. Okay, and that fits on this little housing. This is brass on a thread, uh, on a uh, Oh, uh, a hardened shank bolt, I guess. A shank bolt, I guess what you call it. I always forget the name of that one. I, I cut it off and smoothed it out. Press this on here, and it's got two set screws on this side. Can't see them on that side. They're on this side. And then you've got your three pieces like this. And there you go. Now you've got yourself a, a live center. So all the force is back but it's square this way and it can roll this way and basically the end of this shank bit or into this bit since it's got a live center already in it that's how it holds it right in the center and all the force this whole since this whole thing slides in here okay this whole thing slides in here all the force is against the back and there's no force against anything else everything else is just holding it from falling off the, the whole jig so all the compression force is right here on this little bit of stuff and uh, I believe what I've got put together right there will work fairly well and again I did make all these little pieces and parts or used things off other stuff or a lot of recycled material here okay um, let me kinda show you what I've got as far as the rest of this stuff um, I've got two bearings inside of here, and I did just machine, I machined all these blocks together, um, not including the stainless piece on the end here. This one I did separate. But the rest of these, I machined all these together so I knew my center was exactly the same, and then I took a fly cutter and cut the, um, bearing housing out here until I got it to fit these bearings just right. Then I've got just a little set screw here just to hold this bearing from falling out. Okay, so little set, little set. These flow free. These bearings I got out of an old copy machine. You can see how they're kind of burnt. The races are burnt. That's because they were the, the hot element um, bearing that went on the hot roller with the uh, really big heater element in there. Anyway, little chain. This all came off of a uh, copy machine and uh, this bearing came off a copy machine this motor was thrown out, it's recycled um, and again I'm going through mechanics first, we'll get over to the electronics in a minute but um, just got a little little wheel here on a uh, on a pivot point and that just allows me to get the tension all of the pull force is on this side um, so I don't have to worry about pulling that in it's just for keeping the tension tight here is the uh, the gear um, this looks 100% terrible but I'll explain to you why it looks 100% terrible so this is the bearing that drives and it's just got a hex shaft in there okay this is actually a race out of a old bearing that just happens to fit this shaft Okay, I got my markings on here. I need to find out like this. All right, so that fits on there real nice. This side does not have a set screw in it. The only thing that holds this in place is this weld, which looks terrible because I was welding against this gear, which is oil impregnated. So I just overlaid it and overlaid it and overlaid it just to make sure it stuck well. I wasn't worried about prettiness on this weld. I just need to make sure it stayed on there. But that's just a race bearing that I welded onto the gear. And that way I can pull this off and slide this on without ever having to attach it to the shaft itself. Again, because this free floats in here, it's kind of self-aligning. And it allows this auger bit to, to freely push against the back of this uh, thrust bearing. Okay, and then of course all my little shims and stuff. Yes, I did make every single one of these. 
um, not very fun to make and uh, I actually made them out of some old fittings some brass fittings and here's the front of one and there's the rest of a different fitting that I cut down that I'm just using as a spacer since I had made it so mechanically that's pretty much the breakdown I don't really have much mechanically else to show you on this it's all electronics and it's very very basic so let's go ahead and time lapse putting this whole thing back together and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the breakdown I hope it makes sense to you and hopefully uh, you got something out of it and again I just used my resources there may be a lot better way of doing this but this is just what I had at my fingertips that I could use for this build so yep let's put this thing back together All right. Well, it's back together. I think that'll do. Doesn't necessarily look the prettiest, but it works. All right. Let's just quickly look at the electronics. Um, basically, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's not complicated. There are a couple of knobs and switches and dials. This temperature controller, uh, yep, it controls the temperature of the tip here. This temperature controller controls the temperature of the resistor. Uh, a fuse for it, a fuse for the second one, uh, on off switch just for the thermocouple setup. Then you have a speed dial for how fast the auger bit's going to run, a forward and reverse, which uh, is just part of the controller that I had taken apart to make this work, so I added it. Probably won't use it. Uh, somebody told me that's a bad idea anyway, so I might even just do something different, but that's what I got. And then the on-off switch for the actual auger bit. Now, right now, I do not have anything interlocked between the auger bit and the thermocouple, um, or the uh, temperature controllers here. So what I'm going to do is, there's a couple external relays on here, and I'll end up setting them so if one of these two temperatures drops below a certain point, um, it will stop turning the auger bit. So if something malfunctions, um, the auger bit will not know it, but the controller will. It'll know that there's a problem with the temperature or wire burned out or resistor burned out or whatever, and it will stop the process. Um, it'll stop the auger bit, and that way if I walk away from this thing and leave it running, which eventually I hope I will be able to do, um, right now I definitely won't be walking away from it. But for now, that's what I plan on doing, and if it all works out, um, then I can have this thing run automatically and it will basically control itself in case it gets into a problem. Now the rest of the electronics not much going on. The only other thing I have is a dimmer switch back here. This dimmer switch is actually controlling how much voltage gets up to the top coil. Because I took apart a um, hair dryer and using it a little differently, it, it, it functions different. And so I'm actually um, I'm doing this a little different and I'm controlling the voltage and I gotta get it set just right or else the coil will overheat. I may have to end up purchasing wire, but I can still use the same bobbin. Uh, purchasing the nickel chromium wire. The hair dryer stuff works, but I need to wrap more of the same kind on there instead of just a single strand that I used. Really that was the main problem. Um, two solid state relays back here. Um, each of these, one of these controls each of the temperatures. Um, cord going over to the motor. Uh, this is a 1 horsepower motor, DC. 
um, 90 volts DC, and it has a temperature or a uh, motor controller driver that was recycled from something else. I actually had to make this heat sink. Um, pretty nice. It, I, it t I cut a bigger heat sink down to make that heat sink, but originally this was in a big box. Um, and yeah, I need to put a cover on this side and a cover on this side so you don't get your fingers in there and get zapped because I've done it a few times on accident. But that's basically it. Not much to it. Um, the electronics are simple. But I do have to say something. If, if anybody out there plans on making one of these, please do yourself a favor. Don't buy a really expensive temperature controller. I happen to have these. I would, would rather see the PID loops in the already made software for the 3D printers to be used instead of this. I'm not sure why this is the option that people are choosing, probably because the first guy that did it decided that's what he was going to use, but I would so recommend using the Arduino and the thermistors so much cheaper. This would be an extremely expensive setup if you had to buy it. I happen to have a lot of these things that I've been collecting over the years and this whole entire apparatus is built with things that I had laying around so somebody threw away every piece and part of every single thing here so yeah that's all I got for you um, I hope you guys liked the demo I know it was a very long video and I apologize but I wanted to get all the details in there so that is Russ's filament extruder breakdown this is I'm gonna call it version 1 where I'm not editing anything um, or changing anything yet I'm gonna try it as I built it and if it works awesome if it don't I'll be manipulating or changing some stuff. So that's it. Russ with rwgresearch.com. Peace out, guys. And uh, I'm going to fire this thing up right now, but you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to watch the video.